Dan, have you finished with my knee kicker? Yeah, nice and clean, mate. Shame about your work area. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> Flipping heck, Dan. Yeah, that's, that's something to be careful of, isn't it? Clean up your mess. How you doing, Brian King, UK4 TV. Uh, episode three of the apprenticeship series. Uh, we're with Dan Jones. How you doing, Dan? Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, this week we're doing the uh, knee kicker. Uh, we're going to clean the kicker, take it to pieces. Just the general what a knee kicker's for. Um, as a rule, a knee kicker's not for stretching carpet, is it? No, it's, it's supposed to be a positioning tool, but. We all stretch yeah, with a knee yeah. kicker. In this, in this country, a lot of us use a, a, a knee kicker to stretch. Um, the, the, one of the main important things as well is keeping the kicker head clean. I see your kicker there isn't clean, Dan. There's, I think there's carpets in there what's discontinued years ago. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I won't tell anyone it's yours really either. So, <laughs> 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 so uh, the idea of keeping your kicker head clean is uh, so you don't slip on carpets. Yeah, so you've got on your, your kicker head here, you've, you can see where all this matted fluff is. These are nap grips and they tend to stop the, the stretches slipping on the carpet and then you've also got your main pins uh, which are by the side of it they don't tend to get that bunged up but uh, we'll start we'll clean this out so we can see what's going on with it how do you there's a few ways of cleaning your knee kicker uh, I use a dog grooming brush yeah uh, it's just just you just keep brushing it with the pins and and it just seems to take yeah, yeah most people use a hoop knife hoop blade yeah uh, well I oh, either i, I mean uh, a, st a straight blade will work uh, I, I was always taught with a with a hook blade and it does it does it does get it out quick so it's pretty quick to do that this is something now that will cost you some money if you if you stretch it slips so you need to you need to keep this keep these clear all the time uh, I, I mean one if you're doing a job do it properly get all the fluff out of it. there's a couple of bits of fluff left in it isn't it it's not going to be the end of the world so I mean just before every job just just flick it through the knife like that um, so then you can see you got you got your nap grips here ready um, to tackle any velvet yeah uh, I mean the nap grips as well they're replaceable so if you want to replace the nap grips. Do you know what though, I tend to find that when the nap grips are gone I just replace the kicker. It's about, about, about five years they seem to last me. And you, and you do want a new kicker every so often. Um, so yeah, you can replace the nap grips. Uh, and if you want to replace the main teeth uh, on this kicker, it, it, it's a bit more difficult. I'll show you on, I'll show you on my stretcher. Um, you, you, you mean your, your other stretcher? Yeah, on my other, on my, on my other stretcher. <laughs> And I'll give this one back to Brian. I'll put it back in your tool bag. <laughs> See, oh, we've got a real stretcher here, look. So, yeah, it takes seconds to clean. Yeah, just clean them out like that. Brian only wanted to do this, so I cleaned his stretcher for him. So, if you've got one like this, so a GT2000 or a GT, I think this is just a GT. So, uh, The yeah. nut grips, they're not, they're not that expensive either, are they? Uh, do you know what? I'd like to say no, but basically everything's expensive no, nowadays. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the cheapest way to to look after your kicker is by using it to death and buying another. Um, so basically, those are your main teeth. Uh, and the, so if you want to get those out, you just just take them. As out easy like as that. that, within yeah. seconds. What you tend to find, if you've had your teeth out too far, you can get a little hook on the end of them. Um, it's always best. To, to file the hooks off. Um, it, it wouldn't really matter on a twist carpet, but if you're using a loop and you pull your stretcher back, you, you could pull a loop. So basically, if you've got any hook bits, file them off. Um, See, that's caused by having your pins extended to Yeah, St your off. pins are gone through the underlay into the, th through the underlay into the, the floor, or there's another thing that, that can happen. Um, it's if you put too far also, to your gripper as well, it can bend. Up. Also, yeah, people push close to the gripper. If you've got your teeth out a bit too far, if we can find any grip, there we go. If you've got your teeth out a bit too far and you kick and your front teeth uh, touch the gripper, you can break the front teeth off as well. Um, you, sh you should have it a bit further back than that. 
but I think what we'll do next, so we, we've cleaned that out, we'll put the nap grips back in, um, Brian will start the video and then we'll, we'll, we'll just show how I stretch with it to, to try and get as much stretch on without knocking myself to pieces. And positioning the teeth. And, and we'll do the teeth. Okie doke, so once you've cleaned out your stretcher and you're back to fit a carpet, um, basically I just put it up. I tend to do it by eye, you, you, you know what you're doing after a bit. Um, but basically the way to the way to do it is push push your pins into the carpet and you should just feel a little tiny spike coming through. Just enough to grip the carpet. Just enough you. to get into the back end. Not but enough not to in, pierce the underlay. Not into the underlay. Because if you pierce the underlay it causes uh, dust ingress. Yeah, so yeah. Dust can, and can, you, can. you tend to find if you've just got the littlest spike or even just the bump you can feel when you kick because the way the teeth are they will sink in a, a bit more and also you, you really need to be keeping your weight. If you hold your hand a bit nearer to the head so your main weight is on the head when you stretch you've got less chance of it slipping. Do you use your kicker? Uh, I use mine extended. Yeah do I you, use I yeah. use mine. Yeah. Well, first thing I do with my kicker is, is extend it. I find I find it's easier to stretch. Um, when you come into a room and you are going to kick with it I mean I wouldn't come straight in with a great big kick. You're going to hurt yourself. You could rip the carpet. What you really need to do is if you can work the carpet up so you've took the fullness out of the, the back of it and you've pulled it semi-tight before you try and get your, your final hook on. Um, and I'll, I'll tend to give it two or three kicks and peg it on. Give it two or three kicks and peg it on. I mean, I don't think one big smash is as effective as three little kicks. So, and again, same, same thing with a hammer. I, I feel that a couple of taps of a nail in is far better than smashing it in. in in one go so what a lot do they'll come in and uh, well the length in and then well the, the width in yeah. but there is actually a stretching pattern uh, yeah. where you start in a corner and work, work your way out yeah so you don't have to hit it as, as hard yeah and the, you gradually the, gradually the way the stretching pat pattern works is it, it, it's fighting itself basically so it works up throughout the job you're working up more stretch on the carpet yeah i'll put a link up to the stretching pattern just yeah. so you've got an idea of how you, how you stretch a square room yeah. properly yeah i mean you don't tend to again once you've used the stretching patterns you don't i don't have to look at a stretching pattern do you, you know, once, once you've seen it's the general principle it's uh, the length before the width but you need to stretch out the width before gradually yeah, so yeah. Uh, you need to get some stretch on the width before you put the the, the end wall on so it, once you've worked out how to do it and and when you see a complicated room once you've worked out how to separate that complicated room into three square areas you, it just comes natural. It comes natural, yeah. yeah. So you'll look at that a couple of times, uh, and automatically you're doing it. You don't know that you you're doing it. So um, so Brian will put them up, um, and basically there's there's not much else to do with these kickers. Um, this is where it tends to break. I, apparently you can you can buy these now as a separate bit. That's just a case of taking out these screws. Uh, there's a, a couple of springs and a ball bearing in there, and and, and that's that. So. But, but you can get a brand new kicker for less than hundred quid. Oh so. yeah, I'd rather have a new kicker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'll just wait till something breaks on it, buy another, unless it broke within the first two months. But um, yeah, yeah, I, I, it's nice to have a new tool, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, Dan, another great uh, episode, and we'll catch up with you next time. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers.